Hey guys, welcome to The Powerful Man Show, where we help married businessmen save their marriages without having to talk about it, get unstuck, and gain clarity in their lives. As I like to say, life is too short for average. I'm your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. Now let's get this started. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. Tim, how are you doing, brother? I am intrigued. We're just brainstorming on what this conversation is going to be. And um, I'm really intrigued about the direction it's going to go in. <laughs> well, we'll kick this off is I was talking to an old client of mine. So when I used to do a lot of business consulting and they were bitching and moaning to me about, you know, some of their staff members that aren't playing out. So this is a client, Tim, I worked with probably about two, two and a half years ago or so at this time. And when I came into their company, uh, consulting, right? Consultants, that's what we do. They had an issue with their staff. So they decided, the owner decided that he was going to pinch pennies. And hey, I get it. You and I have owned businesses, Tim. I've had businesses for over 20 years. Understand it. We always got to watch the bottom line. But what he did is he decided to pay for cheap labor, right? He brought in what I would call C-level employees, not C-suite. But if you're looking at, hey, I want an A-level rock star guy, some companies settle for a B guy, he went C-level, right? He outsourced a lot of his work, third world countries. Again, nothing wrong with that for sometimes. But what I told him at the time, because I had done this before, Tim, is oftentimes when it comes to certain things that are important to you is you get what you pay for. Now, obviously, you can overpay for certain things. Totally get it. But ball, you know, bell-shaped curve, usually you get what you pay for. So whether it be staff or something else. And he was just hoping, right? He was hoping these C-suite, these C-level guys would just get better. They would get better on their own. They would take some free courses. You know, he bought a bunch of courses online, kept them in a Google Drive folder, and they went through them, but they had no coaching. They had no one directing them through the courses. There was no accountability. And these were C-level guys. Again nice people, but they were C players. They weren't even B or A players. And I was just reflecting on that as you and I were talking offline. This also reminds me quite often on how a lot of men will do the same thing in their lives. Now, business owners listening to this are like, well, of course, if you hire C-level guys and you just give them some books and some audios or something that they'll all of a sudden jump from a, a C-level player to an A-level player. No, not going to happen. Just isn't. And the same thing happens for a lot of guys that you and I talk to when it talks about relationships or marriage. They often think that they could just listen to an, one more audiobook. It's going to you know, change everything or one more of this rather than actually diving and going all in and investing in themselves and getting some coaching and things of that nature, which really is going to push them and give them the exponential changes. It's going to bring their relationship. Quite honestly, most of the guys we talk to, if you get say, hey, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, right? Everyone to scale 10 is like that. 10 being the best, where is your marriage? Where is your relationships? And a lot of guys will say below a seven, right? They'll say fives, three, sometimes a one will hear. Well, if it's at that level, how are you going to expect it to rise to a nine, 10, where you want it to be, where you deserve it to be by just listening to another audiobook, right? By taking a, a $20 course or whatever it may be. It's just that expectations, you know, ridiculous. I get it because I've done it before too. You know, I've bought, you know, our power just went out of our house, Tim, as you know, yesterday. And I had these cheap lanterns that I bought. They were on sale at Costco. Costco usually has great stuff here in the States. And the lanterns broke. They just broke. And I'm like, crap, I'm, I could have bought something nicer. It would have cost a little bit more money, but it would have lasted, especially in the moment of need. Right. So now I'm lighting candles around my house, watching my kids and my wife <laughs> trying to get things done when the power is dark and the power is out going, ah, good thing I saved, you know, $15, you know, on these lanterns. <laughs> but the point is, when you look at business, it's very similar in this case to relationships. You know, we can't expect if we're going to bring in, let's just say it's the marketing department. We can't expect our marketing, if it's not working, to all of a sudden bring in a bunch of C-level players and all of a sudden have it take off. Like, oh yeah, here's a Facebook course for you. Here's a, a copywriting course. Yeah, just figure that out. And that next week or next month or even next year, all of a sudden they're going to become A players. We know that's not going to happen. 
You either hire an, a, hire an A player if you want A player results or you don't. And the same thing happens in our marriage. But for some reason, a lot of us guys, I was in the same boat, have this disconnect where we think, eh, you know what? I'm just going to wait it out. Maybe next month it's going to get better. Eh, I'm just going to get listen to another audio book in my car. Maybe I'll learn something and everything's going to click. And it just does not happen. No. The worst thing about it is typically these people, I've been there at times as well. And we all do this. There's always an, a way in which you waste money and splurge money. So for example, let's say you're going you're gonna to penny pinch on investing in your relationship. Let's just use that one. Yeah, you go out there and you invest in the latest car or you buy the latest car, right? You're on the waiting list as soon as the, the next Porsche comes out or you uh, go out there and you want to buy technology, whatever it may be, buy the latest drone, wh whatever, latest toy, latest gadget. So the thing about that is your wife watches you splurge and spend money on these things that actually mean something to you and you're doing something about it and you're taking action on the thing you want to do for you and you're spending not just money, but time and energy and, and so on. Yeah, when it then comes to the marriage, hmm, hang on a minute, how come you can go out there and waste thousands of dollars on the latest drone or take a trip for with, with the boys for a weekend and spend a few thousand dollars on that? And didn't he just go away as well a few weeks ago? And didn't he just buy himself some new clothes? Didn't he just, didn't he just, didn't he just? Yeah, our relationship over here is struggling. I don't see any investment there with money or time or energy. Hmm. What impression does that then give off to the wife? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. I think um, I know my wife in the past has talked about the women that she works with because she coaches women. And that's often something that comes up, right? Um, is the the wives will talk about how their husbands aren't investing in the relationship. Now they mean investing financially, but also time oftentimes as well. Why are they not doing that when, you know, and another complaint women have is why, you know, he says I can't spend money, but then he goes off and goes golfing. He go, you know, he does this, he does that. And, you know, you'd mentioned in a previous uh, podcast about covert contracts, right? Where these are, agreements that or expectations that are set that aren't talked about essentially and this happens for a lot of guys as we think for men for some reason tim i think no i think it is is that classic you know idea that men don't ask for directions we're just going to keep driving right <laughs> we're not going to pull over if we're lost and ask for directions and the truth is as a modern man no one's given us directions on how to do a marriage properly right? Especially men that are, are married to strong women, which most of our guys are. They're strong men themselves, strong men, marry strong women. And then you're not given the directions. And so most guys don't want to pull over, right? And get help, talk to a coach, join a group or whatever else it is. And instead, they just want to keep driving, hoping that they find their way. And it does not work. Guys, we have over 100,000 men who have inquired right? That's how many men that we have that have inquired. And we get to talk to a lot of guys, as you can imagine. So you learn a thing or two. Um, and you just learn that it just doesn't work. Just grabbing an audiobook, just hoping things are going to change doesn't work. Uh, I wish it did, right? It didn't work for me in my marriage. So that's how I, that's why I'm adamant about it. But I also get to talk to so many guys. And they've tried that they've been there, they've done that. They joined the military boot camp thing that was really cool on Instagram. But it didn't do anything but get them really dirty, muddy, and make them feel like crap. They felt like almost like doing a Spartan race at the end of it. It was really tough. They were sore, et cetera, et cetera. Good. Do that. That's what you want to do. But don't expect those kinds of things to make major shifts in your marriage. You need tools. You need tools. You can't build a house without the proper tools. You know, if I go and I take, this microphone and try to build a house, it's not going to work, right? You know, on the flip side, if I show up to this podcast with just a hammer in my hand and no camera or microphone, you guys can't hear me. You have to have the right tools for the right environment. And what you need in a relationship is a triadic connection. It's as simple as that, right? You need to know and master the triadic connection. 
We've seen it work with thousands of men and that's what it takes, right? It doesn't, it's not something you're just going to get an audio book about. And the reason I know this is, you know, we give away one of our tools, which is the clean slate method. Some guys, it works a little bit, but almost every guy that goes through our program has to have their clean slate letter rewritten by a professional coach multiple times with them. Now, the coaches don't write it for you, but they give you feedback on it because you don't knock it out of the park the first time, right? My kids, I have a two-year-old. I don't put her on the bike one time and say, good luck, knock it out of the park, take off, catch up with us. No, she's got training wheels. I hold the back of the seat. I help her. I teach her how to pedal, teach her that if you push back, it's the brakes, right? She's a kid. She's learning. She's super smart for her age. She's learning. Us as men, we're still learning. We're still growing. And we haven't been taught this by our fathers or by any other people in our lives. And that's why we have coaches literally from all over the world that are experts that are on our team constantly sharpening the saw and making these things better, guys. Because you need that extra tool. That tool you need to have the right tools in your toolbox in order to complete the job. Yeah, that makes me think as well. You know, so so often guys who come to us, <sighs> I was going to say how it is. They've been burying their head in the sand for so long about the position of the marriage. They tell themselves, she won't leave me. You know, they, they just ignore the warning signs. They think it's a good thing when the arguments stop. Not realizing when the arguments stop, it's a bad thing because she could be checking out. They don't realize that the arguments being there can actually be a good thing because she's checked in. Um, so they want to seek this quiet time where they can walk in through the door and you know not be greeted with arguments, yet they don't want to do the work of actually walking in through the door and be greeted with connection. And it can be such a short-sighted uh, perspective as well, because if they actually considered the cost of, well, the alternative, right? Hey, I'm going to save a few thousand dollars by trying to do it myself or do it for free or by listening to an audio book or whatever, Yet, if this doesn't work, this could cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars in the future. It, it just blows my mind. It's like, invest a little bit now so you, you save the, the big outlay, not only just the financial outlay, but the, the, there's so many other upheavals, right? If divorce or separation was to happen, not just to you, there's also collateral damage. But then, you know, to not bat an eyelid at things like going out there and getting on the waiting list for the latest Porsche or the latest Tesla um, or building a new house. You know, we've had guys telling us how, you know, I want to join the program, but I'm building a custom house with, with, <laughs> my, with my wife. It's like, yeah, but dude, you're not going to be in there with her. Like, you're going to build a house, but it's not going to be a home. So why don't you just redirect some of the money from the project towards this so you can actually build a home instead of a house and you can enjoy the the family time with one another and it can be what you actually envisioned it to be because the house isn't going to fix it. The car isn't going to fix it. The, the jewelry isn't going to fix it. These things that men often do to try and fix it and delay things because they're avoiding doing the hard work sometimes. This isn't to all guys, so I don't mean to be bashing everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just the truth. We, we see it. Was, like you said, we've spoken to thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands of men. We ask them, what have you tried? Why hasn't it worked? There is a pattern. One of their hesitations to joining, they, it's, a, it's an excuse. Money. Excuse. It's not a reason. Most guys waste a few thousand dollars a month. If they really wanted to look at their expenses and really look at being able to redirect things into their own growth, they waste a few thousand dollars. Easy, easy. The truth is they're avoiding doing the work because they're afraid. Oh, it's, it's 100% true, right? And look, I've been there. Right. So, you know, when, I, when I'm listening to you talk here, Tim, I'm like, oh man, I've done this, you know, oh, I've done this. And when you're doing it, like you just get caught right in it um, so many times. I mean, I've talked to you about this as kind of like a famous joke 
of mine that I share with close friends. And my, I even joke about it still with my wife is I remember my wife wanted to do a course it had nothing to do with relationships at the time, but she wanted to do a course. And I'm like, ah, we don't have the money. We're saving money. Da, 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 da. And you know, that day you hear the knock on the door. My wife answers the door. It's the UPS guy, the package delivery <laughs> with a bunch of packages. And one of them is my $2,000 drone. <laughs> right. And it's just a normal day. Like we have packages still today. We have packages come all the time. Um, but we just don't, we don't put things into consideration of their value. When you do the rocking chair test. So the rocking chair test quite simply is, you know, when you're at in the prime of your life, the, the elder years, let's just say 78, 80 for most of you guys, and you're sitting on a rocking chair in your porch and you're looking back at your life thinking, huh, What's the most important things to me? What am I most proud of? For almost every man, it's their relationships, their children, their wife, right? That's what they're most proud of. How much are you investing in those things, right? You're investing in your business, guarantee that. You're investing in clothes. You're investing in trips. You're investing in experiences. You're investing in a nice bottle of wine or some bourbon, right? Or something else that you're spending money on but when it comes down to investing in your relationships, you don't. I know you don't because I talked to so many of you and I was you. I get it. And like I've said, my anniversary as we're recording this is today. Thank God I pulled my own head out of my butt, right? And actually took action because I wouldn't have been there. I wouldn't be, I might be having a two year anniversary with somebody else or something else might be going on in my life. But I've gotten two beautiful children out of this, right? I've, my life is more fulfilled, right? That's why I always say to you guys, do not settle for average. You're meant for more than average. Every religion out there talks about this, right? You're not meant just to settle, not meant for just average. Are you investing into your relationships? Show me your bank account. I'll show you your priorities, right? We say that a lot here because where you're spending your money is gonna tell me exactly where your real priorities are. Not what you say they are, but what your real priorities are, all right? If you, if you look at mine, it may look like Amazon's a priority for me, but you know, if you look at where we're spending our cash and our time, that's how we know our priorities are really. They're like votes. And so limit these excuses. Realize they're just excuses that, are, that you're really masking because you're afraid. You're afraid of something. This is when you get to be courageous, which courage is doing what you're afraid of anyway right? Being afraid and doing it. We say a fireman is courageous because they ran into a burning house to save a child, right? That's what you want to do. The fireman's not, he's still scared, but he's going to do it anyway. So this is what I encourage you guys to do. And, you know, just really make sure you understand exactly what it is you want, rocking chair test, and does your calendar and your bank account reflect those priorities? Yes or no? No BS. I know it's I know it's not the right time. It's never the right time, by the way. I know there's other things that you need to spend the money on. Totally get it. There always is. And I'm not saying you have to join the activation method. I'm not saying you do. We have literally thousands of testimonials from men that have been through it. You can go over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash results and just see it from men just like you. Don't take my word for it. See their exact words. But take something, take another course, um, hire a coach somewhere else. I'm cool with that. I just want the best for you guys because I know what it's like to be in your shoes and I know what it's like to be on the other side of it. And it is so much friggin' better to be on the other side when your wife is looking at you with the love and admiration, respect again, when she's trusting your decisions that you make for yourself and for your family, when she's believing in you wholeheartedly, you get to lead from the front. You need to make a decision. And part of that decision is what am I going to do? And what do my decisions and where I'm investing my time and my financial resources reflect on my priorities? Well said. Awesome, gentlemen, as you always say, in the moment of insight, take massive action. Remember, we're in your corner. See you next time on Powerful Man Show. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this episode. But as I always say, in the moment of insight, take massive action. 
You see, there are two types of men that listen to a podcast like this. Those that go on from one podcast or show to another, just hoping things are gonna change and realizing that they're gonna be in the same place month after month, year after year. You see, I was this guy, so I completely get it. You may just not be ready. But there's also a second man, a second man that listens to a show just like this. And this is a guy who takes massive action so they can shorten the learning curve, compress time, and get results to be the wolf. See, wolf is an acronym for wise, open, loving, and fierce. Now, ask yourself, which one am I? And just be honest with yourself there. And there's no judgment on my end, but if you're ready to move from deactivated deer mode, which is defend, excuse, explain, react, to activated wolf, wise, open, loving, and fierce, then go over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash grow and go there now. In fact, I'll make it super easy for you. I will even put the link right in the description here so you can just click it and go over there now to learn more. Guys, in the moment of insight, take massive action. Go from deactivated to activated because like I said, life is too short for average. And I'll see you on the next episode.